Hello guys and welcome back to the F23A1 rebuild series. This should be the last video. Hopefully the end of this is going to see this car crank up and run. Uh, still got a little ways to go. Hopefully I can do this pretty quick. Um, I, what I've done, I've got the engine up and I went over all the uh, motor mounts and all to make sure I had all the bolts and screws and everything in the right place. I'm not going to have any of the motor mounts actually on the car when I drop it in. And I'm going to show you why right now. I elected not to open up the AC system. So what I've got here is all my AC lines that run across the top of the mount that go here for the uh, transmission. So the engine has to kind of come in and underneath those. And then I'm going to put the mounts on with it still supported with the hoist. And then that way I can uh, put the put that mount on the, on the side of the engine bay there and the one on the back of the transmission. Same is going to go for this mount over here. I'm going to show you all those and where they go here in just a second. All right, this is the transmission mount here that bolts on that firewall underneath the AC line I was talking about. And you can see how that sticks up. And what I need to do is that has to snake under those, those lines. So this is not going to actually be on the, on the car when I go to do that. But I have it sitting up here just to show you. If, if you've forgotten, I've had to go back and relearn as I went to. But it basically has these three studs that come out. And then you just bolt that down on top. So it just picks up on and off. And then the top part here, this, that's where that uh, motor mount, the actual rubber piece goes in between there. And then you run the bolt all the way through like that. And that's the one that's going to be attached to the firewall. None of that's going to be on. So uh, let me back up and show you the front one now. All right, this is the motor mount for the passenger side of the engine, or correction, the driver side of the engine. So it just has these three mounting points on the back, and it just goes in right here. The motor mount on the front of the engine goes underneath that part there. I've got this set aside with all this nuts and bolts ready to go the place it's going to go. That is the front motor mount. Not even worried about that. That can be one of the last things you do. Not a huge deal. All right, and this is the rear motor mount uh, connects with bolt here, a bolt here, and then one more up here at the top. I've just got a little loose right now. And then this part here, of course, on the back goes down over the, the mount that's actually on the frame. And then the bolt runs through and screws in here. If I didn't have to do so much finagling to get this back in under my AC lines and all, I would try to just leave that on. I'd go ahead. I wouldn't bolt it down. I'd leave it loose, but um, go ahead and have it. And try to get it down over that mount as well but the way this engine is going to have to probably go back in it's going to have to be the transmission side is going to have to be dipped down and the uh the front or the with the pulley the bouncers and everything is going to have to be tilted up so that's not going to work in this case so what i'm going to do is probably just have this off completely and then after i get the the front motor mounts or actually the two side motor mounts connected i will um try to finagle this up to where it belongs point out also i've got my uh, knock sensor back in and somehow I managed to cross thread my oil pressure sending right here so I have to buy I'm gonna have to go buy another one of those um should this it won't be too bad to get back up under there and put it in after the engine's back in I'm just ready to go now and again with this uh, water tube if you saw that last video of course it comes out of the water pump here and in the back of the uh, thermostat housing here and it has one bolt that holds it here it's my uh jack shaft i'm not going to have that in i'm going to take that off here in just a second this one is actually broken at the top here it's supposed to go up and connect to these two here as well and first time i realized that had been broken off was when i went to change it. i think it was a wheel bearing on that side I had to take that axle out so i've actually run this car 200,000 miles with with just that one bolt uh, they cost you try to find those used i've looked down about 350 i'm i'm going to see if i can't find another one i'm not too comfortable running that anymore i mean I, what's the worst that could happen it could just break off and then flop around and leave me on the side of the road but i'd rather not go through that all right okay what i'm going to do is uh get you guys up on a stand i don't know how much of this i'm going to be able to film there'll be probably some fast forwarding and not a lot of talking it's just going to be me trying to get Oh, there it is that mount in its right position. That's the first one I'm going after once I have that mount uh, Screwed in and bolted to the firewall and that bolt run through the middle of it uh, We're going to it's going to be pretty smooth sailing after that should be home free 
All right, so let me back up and get the stand ready, and I'm going to see if I can't get this engine dropped in. One of the things I probably should have pointed out too, real quick, is that um, I, before I started anything, I went through the entire um, engine bay, making sure that I had all the wires, the wiring harness. I left my um, water pump, not water pump, my power steering pump connected. I didn't drain that. Uh, my AC compressor is actually laying just where the radiator would sit right now. And so I've got everything uh, just pretty much out of the way, but where it needs to be, if, it, if anything has to snake over or under. Uh, the main thing would be also your shifter cables in the back. I have those just draped down over where the exhaust is at. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick this engine up a little bit higher, and I'm going to start to get it in position, start to lower it down. I don't have to tell you how dangerous something is like this, especially when you're doing it by yourself. Uh, if you're having a problem, back up, stop what you're doing. Don't get your finger anywhere where you're going to um, be likely to lose it in an accident like this. It's a lot of weight swinging around. Be gentle, be careful, be slow. All right. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of talking during this, and I'll probably fast forward and uh, edit some cuss words out along the way. So here we go. Anytime you hear a noise, stop and look where you're at. And this is the part where I knew I was going to run into a little bit of trouble trying to get the uh, intake manifold down past all this where it needs to go. pretty good here. I think we're hung up on the exhaust coming up there. That's exactly where we're at. All right, friends, I think we're ready to try to back it back underneath where it belongs and uh, get that motor mount on the transmission ready. Alright, that looks good to me. I'm going to uh, move the camera so I can get over here where this uh, motor mount's at, and I'll try to film a little bit of that for you as well.
get it on there, and then we're going to run our bolt through it. And raise it back up. Now the trick's going to be just to pick the transmission back up to it like that. Do you see what I see? That looks great to me. Uh, see, I got excited and got in a hurry. Alright guys, that is the hardest part, getting that first motor mount started. We'll back up, get a little bit of water, take a breather for a second, and then we'll come tackle that uh, driver's side. Alright, between the uh, engine hoist and everything, this is kind of the best thing I can get you. I have to use that zoom on that camera. I know it makes it look grainy, but that's just the best you can do. I don't really have a setup to do this over the top of my shoulder. So we're going after this motor mount. It's going to bolt. I don't know how good you can see it, but it goes on top of this one here. I can already tell that once I get uh, things going, I'm going to have to drop the engine some more because this side's higher than that side right now. But basically, uh, you have two bolts here and then this funky looking one here that goes on top here. And of course, nothing's getting tightened down. It's just getting started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have to drop that engine a little bit. All right. I think we can work with that. All right, and then this, uh, I've got bolts that go straight down through there. I can look through. I can see we're going to be lined up just fine. Uh, not so funny story. These are the correct bolts for this. They got the tapered in. I guess it makes it easier when they're actually because they in the factory they don't drop an engine and they bring it up from the bottom. So they have tapers on these where these motor mounts uh, bolts or studs go through. Um, somewhere along the line, I broke both of my studs over here. I was driving home from work one day and uh, also. Bam! I was like, oh my gosh, I've blown the engine. And then when I noticed when I gave it gas, it would go away, but when I let, as soon as I let off the gas, it started blah, 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 again. So the engine had fallen down here, and my AC compressor and harmonic bouncer were actually resting on the frame while the engine was running. So that was a lot of fun. So I had to track down the right thread bolts at Home Depot or something, and these are what I'm using. They work just fine. They, uh, Something might be a little cross threaded. One of them always feels kind of weird, but I'm just going to run those things down, make them make them work. All right, that's almost there. And, uh, while we're here, we're not going to forget this ground it goes on top of the motor mount here. All right, we're going to back up the camera here now. I might need that later. And uh, we're going to take the uh, hoist all the way down, and we're going to see what we got. Okay, guys, we have those uh, both sides motor mounts uh, tightened up, ready to go. The back one and the front one are not on at all. It doesn't matter. Uh, those two motor mounts can, should support the engine just fine. Either uh, we're going to have a drum roll and a ta-da, or we're gonna, you'll, I'm going to film me making a huge mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and... Take the tension off that chain and let the engine, it's probably going to roll this way a little bit, but that's no big deal because it's kind of sitting in there canted right now. Well, maybe not. There we go. I'm going to get that chain out of the way. 
All right, now our uh, friend Gus in the comments, he's keeping up pretty well. I appreciate him. Asked about the valve cover, why that wasn't on if you didn't read it. Uh, that change running across, it would the valve cover would, would re rub it against it, scratched up. I didn't want to have to know that. So, anyway, there you go. Ta da. Long way from home. All right, I got the uh, car up on jack stands now. I've already been underneath it and I've attached that rear motor mount. And I'm not going to lie, that's a lot of wiggling and finagling. But what happened with uh, in my situation is that the engine was rolled backwards. So the, uh, the manifold was laying lower than it should be. And that was having trouble getting onto that, let me see it back there, that rear motor mount. So what I had to do, my setup that I used, is I used my hoist grabbed a hold of that distributor bolt right there and uh, picked up on the engine until all that got lined up. I had to, before that even happened, I'd already gotten underneath it to snake that bracket into place. So I had the uh, three bolts holding it onto the uh, the engine. Then got up here, uh, got it situated with that bolt hole through the uh, motor mount with the hoist, and then I ran that through. Good luck with that. Uh, best I, could, I There was really no way I could film that. This is uh, just showing you how I went about it. Let's move on. All right, a couple more things here. Got the uh, front motor mount on. Mine is missing a bolt. I did not do that when I got this car. It was missing all kinds of bolts because somebody else had changed the engine. And they left a lot of stuff off. I'm having to track some things down. Also got the uh, the shifter linkage right here bolted down, and I've also got it connected to the transmission now. Here and one back here. Uh, the only caveat I can think to tell you on that is there's three bolts. For the, the the mounting for the shifter linkage, two long ones go in the back, and the shorter one goes up front. And then, of course, on your uh, where your linkage connects to the transmission, actually, uh, you have to have that nylon washer and the metal washer on that top one, um, or the one that's pointed towards the back of the engine. And the one that's pointing up is just got uh, the one nylon. I'm not going to show every single thing that I reattached the engine. You took yours apart. Hopefully, the small stuff, you can get it back together yourself. If I run across something that I think might bear a little bit more explanation, I'll be sure to pick up the camera and film that as well. So we're moving right along. I've got my slave cylinder installed now. My AC uh, compressor is installed. The alternator, power steering pump. I started working on some of the uh, fuel stuff up here in the uh, throttle. I'll give you uh, one caveat here. This bracket at the top that is for the power steering pump needs to go on before the radiator, I mean, correction, the alternator uh, bracket. Uh, I know this from experience now because I put the, the alternator bracket on first, not realizing there is a bolt back here that's behind the uh, bracket, so don't get caught up with that. Also, I've got my uh, bouncer put on the front now. I'll try to show you something I'm doing with that. Before I installed it, I found the marks on it, and I went over those with a silver Sharpie. I have a fan going in the background. I'm sorry if that's blowing in the uh, mic. But yeah, I, I marked those with a silver Sharpie, so that way when it comes to time the engine, that would be easier to see those marks. So I'll uh, catch you up here in just a little bit. All right, we're a little further along now. I'm going to uh, get you caught up where we're at. Uh, I forgot to mention last one. I did replace or did get the exhaust manifold put on. It's uh, in position, but it's not bolted to the uh, exhaust system yet. If uh, any of you noticed that broken stud on my head during all those videos, I did replace that. That has been repaired. Um, the main thing that I've been working on is things around the the um, intake manifold. I've taken this sensor off here. I suggest you put that back on before you put the uh, car back, engine back in the car. If um, you haven't gotten to that point yet, that's a little tricky kind of reaching back there. I've got uh, the throttle cable and the uh, uh, cruise control cable attached now. A couple more little odds and ends down there. The fuel, it's not completely tight yet. I got this here mounted back to the back. Okay, uh, what I'm going to go after next is time to start putting the wiring harness on. And this can be intimidating if you're just looking at it, but it's not really as bad as you think. I found that um, here's the, the main part that's going to fit back here. And once you have that one, in position, things kind of start falling where, where they want to live at. 
I watched, um, I'm sure you've watched this guy too, Eric Car Guy, replace engines before, and he would always talk about uh, when you put the, the uh, wiring harness back on the engine, as soon as you start plugging things in, things start kind of going to where they're supposed to be. Uh, there might be a couple that you're a little bit, I'm not sure about that one, you may have to switch some, but most of them can only go one way, so it's not really that bad. The main thing is, is that once you get done, to go back over it and check every inch of your wiring harness and make sure that you don't have a sensor unplugged, because if you go to crank and uh, it won't start, you, you might be chasing the wrong thing when it could be something as simple as an unplugged sensor. So I'm going to get started on that now. I'm going to come back when I'm a little bit further along. All right, guys, I'm going to show you here now where I'm at with my wiring harness. I've, um, basically, again, how, how I generally started, I put the um, part that goes across the fuel injectors on first, and everything kind of wraps around on this side over here. Started off with my O2 sensor here. So as you can see how this has to go down there. So that way you know that that's all pretty much in the same, in the right position. And um, you've got this bracket here that holds the back of this piece. It also clicks into here and then on top of the transmission right there. So once you have that kind of exactly where you know how it goes, then you can start tracking down all of your, um, your plugs and sensors and they kind of, I'll kind of have enough wire to reach where they're supposed to be and probably not much of anywhere else. So I'll just go over briefly what I've got connected here. This is the part for the transmission, like for the backup lights. My fan switch right here underneath where the distributor goes. This will be my uh, temperature sensor here. This is for the distributor, which I haven't installed yet. No, actually, I'm sorry. This is my part of my VTEC, and then you have another part of your VTEC that goes under here. Th that is your temperature sensor. My, I apologize. One goes down here. That actually connects to a sensor on the back of the transmission. Up top here. There are two different ones. They both will fit. I went back and looked at the pictures that I took to make sure I had it right. On my application, the gray one goes on top, and the blue one back there goes to the idle, idle air control. All right, and then, of course, you have your four fuel injector sensors underneath this rail here. I do not have them installed yet. I'll explain why here in a, in a few minutes. There's my EGR. I forget the name of this guy here, but that's plugged in. The wire harness comes around here. Behind this part here is your uh, crank position sensor. It tucks in across the top of this down and then this, you have your uh, places for your alternator here I'm not going to be able to really oh also there's one back here I'm not sure I think that's the intake air temp I'm not a hundred percent certain and then again there's one back here now these sensors that sensor right there does not the wiring for it does not come across the top the part that goes down here it actually goes under, and then you have for your knock sensor that's down here. Your oil pressure t uh, sender is beside that. Then down here, there's one that's con down here. There's one that's connected to all the way down on your power steering part. And then the last one that comes up is that guy right there on the back of the uh, the idle air control. <clears throat> one more thing to keep in mind is uh, your ground for the harness kind of ends up in this neighborhood right here and it needs to be bolted somewhere onto the engine I haven't chosen a spot it doesn't kind of really want to reach anywhere uh, the people that had uh, changed this engine before I think they kind of jury rigged a lot of this so I'm, I'm just kind of going back and cleaning up what they did to try to um, get it to match what I've got going on here I'll come back uh, once I get the vacuum things on and I'll just give you a once over how those things just basically just uh, you know show you in a picture form this is, this is how I have everything hooked up. Uh, the only thing that's really left, that's your starter cable. And then you have your uh, engine ground right here. Of course, your battery cables. And then all this right here, that goes over for all of your fans across the, uh, the uh, radiator right there. I think I've mentioned everything. If I didn't, somebody in the comments uh, catch my mistakes and... Uh, get a discussion started on that because it, it is a lot to keep up with but 
once you get going and you just kind of, you know, use some common sense, you'll be able to get that. So I'm going to get the, uh, the half shaft back in and get the axles back in. Uh, I'll come back and I'm going to show you uh, what I got going with the, um, the half shaft. All right, it's been a couple days since I began this video. I've been waiting for some parts to come in. That's why this is going to be a little delayed getting out. But um, if any of you were concerned, I was going to run this broken uh, jack shaft that I had. Uh, again, I ran that thing probably 200,000 miles before I even realized it was broken. So when these guys replaced the engine, they broke that thing and just left it in there for and crossed their fingers. So fortunately, I didn't get in trouble with that. But what I did, I did get on eBay and I found one. I actually got a really good price on this. I'd seen them before as high as 300 and some dollars. I got this one for 80 bucks. And it came also with the hardware. And the reason that's important, you see two of the bolts have these uh, necks or shanks on them. And that's that's necessary for the installation on this. So I'm going to get this in the car. I'm not going to videotape any of that. But um, it's pretty easy. Just slide the one end of the transmission and you bolt the, uh, the bearing part onto the back of the uh, crankcase. I'll come back when I'm done with that. All right, guys. I'm going to get you caught up to where I'm at right now. Um, one of the things, this is kind of the little things that will trip you up, but we're trying to refigure out how I had the battery cables and the run down to the starter and how all that works. This, if yours was equipped with AC, this on the top here comes off your battery box, and this little thing connects here. Down here, you can see this on either side, there's a bracket that runs in between those that's underneath the bracket off the top, and it screws down there, so that holds your positive and negative battery cables. And back here I have the um, starter re -hook back up. You can't really see it, but underneath the starter there are two screws. One is for a bracket to hold that um, starter uh, electrical cable only. The other one is the engine ground. Okay, uh, what we're going to be about right here is uh, getting the distributor put back in. What I've done is I've, I've got actually a tire off the car on the side. I've um, so I can get to the bowl. I don't have an inner fender. Mine got ripped out years ago, so that's not a problem for me. But at any rate, um, what I've done is while I was rotating the inner engine counterclockwise, I put my hand over the top of this spark plug tube until I started feeling compression. So it's, it's, you take your hand out, it'll, it'll poof air out of it. And then, sorry about that fan. Down here, if you can see my timing marks that I put on my uh, balancer when I, when I put that back in, remember I showed you that. The one that's by itself is your top dead center, and you can see the uh, marker for it that comes off of the, um, the front plate there. So I have the engine at top dead center now. I'll try to show you this the best I can. All right, so when the engine is at top dead center, the place where the distributor goes in is straight up and down. I'm sorry about the shaky camera there. I'm trying to squat and hold it with one hand. Um, on your distributor, has the matching thing. Now this will only go one way. It's kind of offset a little bit. You can get that in there the wrong way if you try really hard. But if uh, you, you've got it straight up and down, it doesn't feel like it's wanting to go, you need to spin that 180 degrees. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to, but I've also I changed the O-ring on the back of that distributor as well. I remember I had a bad leak uh, that was coming from here and down top of everything. So I'm going to get that put in and then uh, finish up the valve cover, two water hoses, and we're ready to go. All right, guys, we have finally finished the install for this engine. I'm going to go over some of the things that uh, you missed. Uh, things have changed in my world, and I apologize for the lay on this. A pretty big life change just happened to me, and I had to, uh, I'm not where I was at anymore. But at any rate, I've got to, had to get the car towed to do the last bit of everything. I was waiting on one part. Somehow the, um, the two washers for the fuel fitting here. There's a flat one on the bottom and there's a serrated one on the top. I did not have them. I am so good about keeping up with things and somehow I missed that so I had to wait until I could get those from eBay. Uh, that kind of held things up and then a sudden move. But at any rate, we've got the car finished now. I want to show you uh, some of the vacuum hoses and, and things that uh, how they're run. You've got this one vacuum hose here that goes off and it runs into this this part here. You have the one that runs down here to the top of the fuel pressure regulator. And then they connect back like that and, and onto the vacuum part of the uh, manifold there. 
uh, that can be kind of tricky if you if you don't remember how you did things. Um, got that one that comes out of the uh, the the uh, brake booster and goes to that big fitting on the top. All right, let's go back around on this side. We're going to talk about uh, this gaggle right here. It's a vacuum hose and it's also a water hose. So the top part is the vacuum hose here. The bottom part is the water where it comes out of the uh, throttle body to warm it. It comes around, loops it back around, and it goes back down into the uh, water uh, ha uh, thermostat housing right here. Uh, we'll go over the distributor now. The uh, firing order on this car is 1342. Yeah, 1342. So uh, there's no adjustment on this distributor since this is ECU, full ECU OBD2 car. Um, it only bolts in one way. The ECU takes care of the engine timing. But uh, what you want to do, this is your number one here, is your number one um, plug wire. If you look closely, there's a mark on the top of the distributor that's beside the number one. So you know that behind that would be where your first one goes in. So it's one, three, four, and then the back one's two. All right. <laughs> Have the battery hooked up. Uh, the air box hooked back up all this hooked back up over here power steering alternator everything is ready to go for the first crank on this car and i'll tell you this i've uh what you need to do is you when you get your water in it first also you open up your radiator of course and you start pouring water in it and then back on top of the it's kind of hard to see back here you see my fingers pointing that is the bleeder for that so you want to crack that loose it's 12 millimeters don't take it off just crack it loose it works just like a brake bleeder and you fill it up till water starts to come out of that you tighten it down then you put your radiator cap back on if you crank it and you have air, a lot of air bubbles in your or air in the system the car will surge as the uh, air goes past the um the sensor in there it thinks that it's that you first cranked it up and the water temperature is cool so it'll raise the idle up so it'll and it'll sit there and it'll run like that until you get all that air bled out of the system. Uh, don't be discouraged by that as well. All right, so at this point, uh, we're ready for the first crank. I'm going to have somebody hold the camera here for me, and I'm going to go ahead and, give it, and turn it over and see what we got. All right, that went well for the, the first crank on the car. As you saw, it's running really smooth. There's um, not really any ticking. The valves all sound good and all. I had one check engine code. It was 1259. That is for VTEC failure. Uh, I'll tell you what I did before I did the first crank. As I left the spark plugs out of the the head, and I had the all the connectors for the fuel injectors disconnected, so that way I could spin the engine over with no compression and the fuel injectors weren't dumping fuel down into the engine. I did this for about 30, 45 seconds, and what that does is help to start your uh, oil going through the whole system. Uh, after I got that completed, I went ahead and connected my fuel injectors and got the spark plug wires in, and it's still through the uh, 1259 code for VTEC failure. Uh, I cleared the code, and it has not come back. What I suspect it was is it still was not enough oil pressure when it first cranked, at the uh, VTEC solenoid, uh, if that is what can cause that, no oil pressure. So that is gone. Uh, I've now driven the car uh, probably about a mile, went around the block here where I'm at. Uh, went through the gears nice, it's running, seems like it's got the uh, power that it needs. Uh, Park it on cement, got up under it, looked real good, nothing's leaking, no oil, no water. So it, now it's time to put this car in service and cross our fingers. I think I'm going to be okay. You've seen the videos. You saw how meticulous I tried to be about everything. And at this point, I would like to thank everybody who's come along for this ride. This is unfortunately going to be one of the last videos I do for a while. You guys remember, uh, if you've been watching my series, you may have uh, noticed in the background there was a black Honda Del Sol. It was a 93 Del Sol. Uh, my, I had full intentions of doing a D15 series next, and then I was going to sand that car down. I had a new carpet kit for it. I was going to get some new seats, coilovers. I was really going to go all out on that thing. I was really looking forward to it, but um, you know, after some things changed, it was really out of the blue and not anything that I was expecting. I had to sell that car kind of in a fire sale with a 
some of my bigger tools like my engine stand and things like that so as sad as that is i've got about a year before i retire from the uh my current employment and so after that year's up and i can try to get back to my life and hopefully i can i can get back to working on these cars and and bring some more videos i know they're not the most professionally done i know i get tongue-tied i know i made mistakes but i certainly appreciate everybody that's been along thank you and uh, i guess i'm out for a while now and i always appreciate your comments